While driver is under arrest for two tragedies, police say he drove his car into a crowd of people gathered for a benefit for victims of a deadly house fire in Luzerne County. This incident happened in a town that I used to live in. When the suspect was apprehended, I started seeing his face plastered all over social media. People were angry. Some people demanded the death penalty. Others came to his defense claiming it was mental illness. In this video, we're going to review this case and one other to see if we can come to a conclusion of whether the death penalty should be abolished or not. Hello, my name's Janine and you're watching Now You Know. In the early morning of August 8th, 2022, an aggressive fire was lit on the front porch of a home in Nescapec. The fire spread very rapidly, and it took the lives of 10 people in the home, three of which were children. Eight days later, the community came together to raise money for the victim's family. The event was held at the Intoxicology Department Bar and Grill in Berwick, Pennsylvania, a town that borders Nescapec. This is good people coming together to do good things and having a good time doing it. We need more people like this in the world. Members of the community participated in auctions, games, a dunk tank, a water balloon fight with a DJ on site. It seemed to have been a very well-planned and successful event. But just a few miles away, 24-year-old Adrian Oswaldo Sura Reyes was involved in an argument with his mother. He became extremely frustrated with her. He got in his car to leave. His destination was unknown. As he drove through Berwick, he took notice of the fundraising event. He saw all the people outside having a good time, so he turned his car around, but he didn't actually have any intention of joining in. As he approached the crowd, he stepped on the gas and plowed into and over the participants. People scrambled to get away. Others say it happened so fast they didn't even know what was going on. The DJ himself jumped into action, getting two kids to safety, only to be hit by the car himself, breaking his ribs, collarbone, and hand. Emergency services were called and Adrian drove off. Three helicopters were dispatched for airlift of the victims and to find the car that did it. Geisinger Medical Center, the local hospital, went to a code black for the mass casualties that were coming in. As people were tending to the victims, many of whom were children, a call came over the police radio. Another incident was happening in Nescapec. It was reported another person was hit by a vehicle. Police responded to find that Adrian had returned to his house, where he found his mother outside. He took the opportunity to run her over as well. When he got out of the car, he realized she was still alive but unconscious. He then pulled a hammer from his vehicle and proceeded to hit her in the head repeatedly until police arrived. Adrian had succeeded in killing his own mother. One woman from the fundraising incident had also passed away. As for the 17 other victims, some of them are still in critical condition. Others were treated and released. If it wasn't for the quick actions of the first responders, other community members, and Geisinger Medical Center's award-winning team of medical professionals, this could have been much, much worse. In the description box of this video, I'm going to be supplying every single GoFundMe account I can in connection with this disaster. If you want to help these families, please do so. As I said before, some people on social media wanted him to be hanged for his crimes. Some comments said string him up. Others said he should be run over himself. Well, some people came to his defense saying that it was mental illness. One comment stuck out to me though. It said, bring back the death penalty. But in Pennsylvania, we have the death penalty. Currently, there is over 150 inmates sitting on death row in Pennsylvania right now, but that's as far as it's going to go for them. They will not be executed. Let me explain. You see, Governor Tom Wolf created a memorandum halting all executions until he gets a finished report from the Pennsylvania Task Force and Advisory Committee on Capital Punishment. 
That was issued in 2014. In June of 2018, the report was finished. It stated that it costs more for inmates to be on death row than it would for them to face life in prison. Why does it cost more? Well, for the simple fact that they are able to appeal the decision over and over and over again. There is no set numbers of appeals, and this is why it takes so long for executions to occur. The report also stated that capital punishment is racially unfair. It stated 68% of all death row inmates in Pennsylvania are black, and at the time, only 11% of the population was black. They also mentioned that there's a chance of executing innocent people. So here are my thoughts. DNA testing, surveillance, investigations, all of those have been drastically improved over the last couple of years. It is harder and harder to get away with a crime nowadays. Once a jury of your peers finds you guilty nowadays, it's likely you are. Yes, I am aware that some people have been falsely accused, and sadly, others have been wrongfully executed in the past. But what about those types of people that we know for a fact they are definitely guilty? Let's use Adrian as an example. As the police were arresting him for murdering his mother, he said, You know that car that ran over those people over there in Berwick? Yeah, that was me. Of course, there's going to be a trial. There was video footage. He admitted to it. There's going to be evidence on his car. He will be facing the death penalty. But because of Governor Tom Wolf, he will not be executed. At least, not until we get a governor elected who actually has the balls to follow through on the duties he was elected for. I want to point out that Governor Wolf's main reason for the memorandum was to save tax dollars. But his memorandum is not saving the state any money because people are still sentenced to death. And the same money is still being spent on appeals even though they know Governor Wolf will issue a reprieve the moment the death warrant hits his desk. So you would think when Tom leaves office that these executions would be put through. But no. Well, Tom promised before he leaves office, he will grant reprieves to any death row inmate who is not able to get a stay of execution or to successfully appeal their sentence. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. And while you're doing that, hit the subscribe button too. Now, as I stated before, the report claimed also that the death penalty was racially unjustified. I want you to keep that in mind while we look into this next case. On April 28, 2000, at 1.30 p.m., Richard Bromhammers, an immigration attorney from Pittsburgh, walked over to his neighbor's house, Anita Gordon. She was Jewish and a longtime friend of Richard's parents. He fatally shot her and then set the house on fire. He then jumped in his Jeep and directed himself to the Beth L. Congregation in Scott Township, where he fired into the windows of the synagogue and spray-painted two red swastikas on the building. Yes, you heard me right, he is a white supremacist. He then headed to the grocery store where he shot Anal Thanker, an Indian man who was just there to get his lunch for the day. He then turned his gun on Sandeep Patel, the store manager. Sandeep was hit in the neck and was instantly paralyzed, but survived. After that, he headed into a Chinese restaurant where he shot and killed Ji Ying Sun, the manager, and then the cook, Theo Pham. He ended his murderous rampage at a karate school where he took the life of Gary Lee, a 22-year-old African-American who was just there to exercise. He was arrested, and during the investigation, police found his motive. Richard had written a manifesto where he complained that European Americans were being outnumbered by minorities and immigrants. Now, do you think the families of his victims should have justice? Even though a jury found him guilty and he was sentenced to death, he was able to appeal many, many times. On January 19th, 2020, Governor Ed Randell signed Richard's death warrant. Richard was scheduled to be executed on March 18th, 
2010. Until a judge actually stepped in and granted him an indefinite stay of execution. Over 20 years, this white supremacist has been sitting on death row, throwing away the taxpayer's money, constantly ripping open old wounds from the victim's families because every single time he would be granted an appeal, they had to relive the incident over and over again. People who oppose the death penalty use the appeals process as part of their argument to abolish it, stating that it's too painful for families involved. So why are there so many appeals permitted? Well, the Pennsylvania Task Force report says some of these inmates are not given adequate defense attorneys. Did you know the cost to house a life-term inmate is about $2,500 per year, but the cost of a death row inmate is about $15,000 per year, most of which is spent on lawyers and court hearings? My suggestion is you get one appeal, just one, but the state should be giving you the best of the best defense team. If the sentence still stands, then you're done. But what about the method of execution? What if they're not as humane as some people argue? There are quite a few options. There's hanging, there's electrocution, the guillotine, there's the gas chamber. Uh, what else is there? Oh yes, lethal injection and firing squad. Some states actually give you an option of which way you want to go. What would you choose? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. A study done by Pew Research Center states that 60% of all Americans support the death penalty. That study was done in April of 2021. I want to know what you think. If you support it or not, let me know in the comments section. All opinions are welcome here. No fighting, though. Be good. As I said in other videos, I would hate to have to sit on a jury where someone's life is in my hands, but it is our civic duty as Americans, and the position should be respected. The decision of 12 jury members, I feel, is fair, and I don't think it's right for someone like Governor Tom Wolf to take the law into his own hands, undermining the jury in these cases. But that's just my opinion. To be honest, the system does have flaws, and some changes do need to be made, mainly in the appeals area. But I do not think the death penalty should be abolished. Not when there are monsters out there running around, mutilating, torturing, killing innocent lives. You have to think, God forbid, if it happened to you or one of your loved ones, how would you demand justice? Thank you for joining me today, and as always, take care, stay safe, and thanks for listening.